Welcome back. This is Erdizzle's walkthrough of my four Pro Tour rounds for week 79, which had some interesting stuff go on at the end. And so I'll walk through my bag just at the beginning here because it's the same bag I use throughout all four rounds. And so starting off with my accurate windbreak fuse that I use for approach shots, sidearm, putting, all that stuff. And then the accurate windbreak river, which I prefer over the Explorer because it's much straighter and predictable. And then the accurate windbreak musket, which I prefer over the accurate glide. I just like the flight, it's more consistent. The windbreak glide recoil, which is probably my least used disc, but it does come in handy on some holes. And then of course the light glide ballista, which is one of the best discs in the game in my opinion. And the turn roll ballista, which sometimes I use, sometimes I don't, but there's some oak hill holes that it's very, very, very valuable. So just jumping right into round one. And I did not look at the scores, so I don't really care what people are shooting. I just go right into it. So hole one on Crow's Nest, hole one. I'm gonna throw a sidearm river. And that's one of the reasons why I like the river. I don't have to worry about the Explorer finishing right. It's just straight as an arrow with some slight turn. And that is the easiest hole in the game according to the hole rankings, difficulties. So hole two, this is one if you've watched some previous videos, I do like to get a shot at eagle on this one, kind of depending on how close I am. So I play the recoil up here by the rocks. Hopefully I'm in the 200, 210 range. So this one, I'm actually a little inside that. And so 188 feet is usually fuse range. It's not quite in sidearm range, so I'll do a backhand fuse. And the disc will naturally turn over. And so with that wind, I, I kind of debate on what I'm gonna do. So I actually end up thinking about going to the river but I just stick with my my fuse and looking at my shot in hindsight I kind of knew that that was going to be right because even with the two wind it likes to slide to the right and turn over so not quite the best run but again no worries you got the wall back there so you can just run right at it without too much worry so get the birdie eagle's nice but not necessary then hole three, this is again, probably one of the easiest holes in the game. I know there is OB, but just throw a fuse up there or sometimes I'll go river. And this is round one. I just decided to get greedy. I don't know why I did that. It was kind of stupid, but I went for it. And luckily I hit basket. I think if the wind was anything other than one, I probably wouldn't have tried that. But with the wind of one, not the smartest choice, but I decided to run it. So a little lucky, but sometimes you gotta get a little greedy. And then hole four, we're now switching over to harrowing. And you guys will hear some birds in the background. That is not the game. That's actually my front yard. So I'm adding some sound effects for your benefit. Hopefully you enjoy that. So hole four, pretty standard stuff there. Just throw it out there, get the birdie. Again, I'm not ace running with the OB directly behind the basket. Uh, hole five here, this is one where the recoil comes in. So there's a couple holes in the game where the recoil just makes the hole so much easier. And this used to be a musket shot for me, but the accurate windbreak musket doesn't quite get up there as much as I like. Sometimes it hits short. So I'll go recoil, and that's even with a wind of three, that's a pretty easy shot. All right, so this is the first real challenging hole, hole six. And I've, I've got a lot of different shots I throw here. What I've been experimenting with lately is, and you can see I'm kind of debating, do I go to the right, do I go to the left, is I'm gonna throw the light glide ballista and just kind of stall it out there. And that was a little lower than I normally like to do. And you can see it kind of takes off long. What I started to do on that hole is play it a little higher and turn it over a little more and just have it stall out and drop. I find that that keeps them from skipping too long. Doesn't always work, but I was a little disappointed that I missed that shot there. That was honestly from that range, that was just dumb. That should have been an eagle, but I just left it short. And I looked back at the video on that one, and so hole seven, we're switching to Oak Hill. I looked back at the video and I thought my power was good, my aim is good, it was just poor results. So I kind of gave away a stroke there on hole six. All right, hole eight here. So that last one was a pretty easy shot. So this one, I'm playing it a little short. I'd like to be in the 150 to 160 range. And so I'm 152. If this is the range, I'm really comfortable with a forehand fuse. So I am gunning for this one. With a halo around the basket, as long as I get somewhere close, it'll stop. And I, that was dead center. I know that looks like a crazy shot, but I've practiced that forehand fuse a lot. And then hole nine, this is just a challenging hole. Um, even with the tailwind of one there, I'll play the light glide, but I'm... I'm not really holding out hope that this gets up there. This is, for me, it's kind of a low percentage play. 
and I think the hot round for round one was like a 12 under or a 13 under, so they must have gotten that harrowing par four and the one I just threw in on and this one, and somebody shot a 13, so they must have got an ace somewhere in there. That's just, that's a crazy round. That was not my best round, but again, no big mistakes, so I didn't, you can't win a tournament on the first day, but you can definitely lose it. And so I ended up with a 10 under there. And again, I'm two or three strokes out of first place. So jumping right into round two, there's no delays. I didn't really take any screenshots. So hole two, or excuse me, hole one, round two is Oak Hill. And again, this is a tricky one that I'm just trying to throw out there and hopefully get a big skip and get an opportunity for a throw in. But this is definitely not a gimme shot. So 140, I'm going to switch over to that forehand I was telling you guys about and aim a little bit lower. So I really, really like that forehand shot and hoping I can hit it. And that one just a little, little to the right. I thought the wind would affect it a little more, but I'm okay with birdie in that one, as long as I give it a shot for eagle. So I'm just hoping I get something where I can use a roller. Uh, this one, another recoil shot. You could throw a musket on this as well. I find the musket sometimes stays up on top of the hill. And so throwing the recoil, occasionally goes a little too long, but I'm almost always down there. I'm never 80 feet away up the hill. So 30 feet, pretty happy with that. And so I'm pretty sure a par four is coming up, but I don't know which one. And this one, man, wind of three, I, I've been switching over to the light glide. Um, I'd experimented with rollers, but again, that wind of three doesn't seem to have as big effect as you'd anticipate. And so this same wind was on one of the daily tournaments around this time. So I was fairly confident just throwing it up there, getting it on top of the hill and letting it roll. And I mean, <laughs> you're not going to get much better roll there. Hits the pole. I mean, it's about as good as you can do on that. So definitely needed to get the eagle on that one since I didn't get it on hole one. I mean, Oak Hill, you really, it's not as bad as sunshine, but you'd really like to come out of there four under. And so that's definitely what I did. So then hole four, we're shifting over to windswept. And even with the wind of five, I'm just trying to pay a stall shot. And this is where the Explorer might be the better shot. I've actually had the river hit right there and then stand up and roll 100 feet to the right. So I am not liking that 54 foot five mile or five headwind. And so I'll switch to putt. I would never in a million years throw that because I have zero confidence in a headwind putt from that range. So now this is where, I don't use the roller a lot, but this is where the roller really, really, really comes in handy, even with a five wind. So I'm going to throw a forehand roller, hopefully loop it around. And really the only danger here, playing it wide, is avoiding those two trees. And so if you can avoid those right there, I thought there's a chance that tree might come into play, but it did not. And so this thing is just going to be beautiful. Going to roll back. It's a little bit of an uphill there, so it'll stall out. Uh, occasionally I'll go a little too far to the right, but I'm never in the water. And I always at least have a shot at Eagle. Um, I shouldn't say always. Occasionally it'll roll way, way, way left. But that's one where I, regardless of the wind, I want I want the roller to give me an Eagle shot. So same with this one right here. A wind of three. I, I, I kind of want to get this every single time. And so I put my ballista on a little bit of hyzer. And that was not a good shot. It kind of flipped over on me. And luckily I missed that bush right there, which can just deaden it. And so if you can skip by that tree, you usually have a putt at it. So 47. Again, that's why I really like to get on the other side of that rock, because then I don't have to throw it. I can putt it. So three eagles in. I feel pretty good about this round. And then we shift over to blueberry. And I don't want to say these are gimme holes, but with blueberry, you know there's only one par four. And so the goal here is just don't screw up any of the par threes. And there's one, the downhill one is an ace run, but most of the other par threes on this are not really aggressive ace runs. Or I should say high percentage ace runs. They're not ones you're going to get all the time. So it's just make sure you don't screw it up. Same with this one. Just I'll throw a, a river on this a lot of times, but with that wind going left to right, I'm just going to throw a musket way up in the air and just let it stall down. And as long as you don't clip the trees, just get, I mean, anywhere down there. Occasionally it'll do that and go a little long. And that's definitely not ideal but I can straddle around. And I thought there was a chance I might hit the bushes there or the tree, and it did, but it did not knock it down. So it's not those iron leaves that just kick the crap out of your disc. And then leading with this one, so just like I said, all par threes. 
I mean, you can kind of run this one, but this is one in a daily tournament. I'll throw my accurate glide, but I don't keep that in the bag regularly, so I don't really have a disc that'll get there. I mean, I can throw my recoil, but I'm not gonna screw around with that. Just take your three birdies, get out. I know I've got a 12 under round, and I think that 12 under round put me, I think it was one shot out of first, so I was feeling pretty good. So again, no pauses, jumping right into round three, sunshine. Again, I've heard people say this before, you wanna come out of sunshine with a minus four. And uh, I caught the halo, didn't quite get it, but that's probably the lowest percentage ace hole for me. I mean, the accurate windbreak musket's a pretty good disc for that. So this one, I love running this one. Sidearm river all day, a little wind, so I aim it to the side and I wanna ace this. I at least wanna give it an ace run every time. And so that one was so far off for where I want to be. I mean, I really, really wanted to get that one. And sometimes with the wobble, and there's a long putt, sometimes with the wobble, you just can't predict it. And that was definitely wide, didn't even hit metal, but it is what it is. So this one, even with the two headwind, I'm going for it. Like, you got to be aggressive on these if you want to win these tournaments. And so I'm going to play the turnover and just play it through and hope I miss the trees, and I did. And... You want to get a little slide, so I feel pretty good as long as I'm in the 70 to 80 foot range, even with the two headwind. That's sometimes I leave that a little high, but that's pretty standard stuff. And that <laughs> I can't believe that kicked out on the ground. That was so lucky. I think it just stuck in the chains long enough, and they gave it to me. So we'll take it. All right, hole four. We're now switching to heroin, and I sometimes leave this one a little short. So you'll see me throw recoil sometimes. I think in the daily tournament for the 15th of June, I threw a recoil, but it's musket recoil. Just get something up the hill, avoid the branches. And so most of these are just, I don't want to say they're standard par threes, but they're kind of those, you're not going to ace it, so don't screw it up. So just roll with it. <clears throat> that was perfect. So I don't know how this is to watch, but playing, these are some pretty boring layouts, like just some pretty standard par threes. So now we get a little interesting. We switch to the par four. And with the wind of two going right to left, I really debate, like, do I throw the stall shot? Do I play it out right? So you can see my indecision. I'm like, do I play it out here? And I go ahead and go with the wide route here because if you play the big stall shot with that right to left wind, and I got lucky getting through those trees, if you play that right to left wind with a stall shot, you're, you're really bringing the water in the left into play. And so luckily I'm in putt range because, you know, when I played this first round, I doinked to that putt, which was annoying. So I will play that stall shot most of the time unless it's the wind you just saw there. All right, so again, here's where you got to be aggressive. I'm going roller. Oh, got some low battery I got to worry about. And so some people will just go up, to the, oh, go up the gut on this one, but God, I'm going roller, which extremely aggressive, which I very easily could go out of bounds. But again, you, you got to take these risks. This is the difference between winning these tournaments and finishing two, three, five strokes out. You gotta take the risks. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And so with roller, if I'm good, I'm anywhere within 70 to 100 feet, so that's 89. Again, that's the range. I made a putt like that earlier. That's pretty standard stuff for me. I wanna make that most every time. And so now I'm three eagles in, I'm feeling really good. And now again, I know this is blueberry, so I know I'm gonna get two par threes because I just had the par four. So it's just a matter, again, boring layout. It's just don't screw it up. And that one I almost threw into the trees, but so play the play the stall, hyzer there, get your birdie. And I don't know what's coming up on the ninth hole, but it's probably gonna be a really easy par three. Again, the only one of these blueberry holes that I really, really run, yeah, so this is pretty easy, is that downhill one with the stream running side to side. That one I'll really go for. The rest of these just give me birdies all day long. It sucks for rating, but it is what it is. So this is my second round in a row that I got a 12 under. So I think this one will put me in first place or close to first place by a stroke, which leads me into round four. So now going into round four, I'm not gonna give too much here. All I need is I need a 12 under. So I waited a little while to play this. I need a 12 under to tie for first. And so my goal here is 12 under. And so this one, I play a stall shot, and I got a really, really bad roll out of that. So right out of the gate, I'm thinking, crap. 
And so 77 feet, luckily that's that's in my, my good range. But I know I need a 12 under to tie for first, 13 for solo. And it's still early. I think there's one other player that was close that might play. And so here there's no way in hell I'm going to try to ace run this one. Just take my birdie. But knowing I need a 12 under to get first place, there's got to be at least three eagles out here. So I'm hoping for something. So again, three eagles is my goal. And so hole three, I'm really happy to see this one. This is where I throw my sidearm recoil. And I just want to hit it. If I can hit somewhere around those rocks, I'm pretty confident that the disc will usually stick. And so when I throw this, I thought I cut it a little short. And it hit the rocks. And every now and again, you get a weird skip. But that's, I mean, one out of ten times, it will hit back and roll in the water. And the nice part about that tree right there is the trunk has collision, but the leaves don't. So you can putt right through those leaves with no worries. All right, so there's my first eagle. So now I know I need two more. And this one with the left to right window three, I'm going to ace run this one just because I've got the backdrop there. So I'm pretty confident that I can get it down there. And boy, did I screw that one up. I hit the tree and dropped. And I, yeah, that was not a good shot. So a 78 foot shot on this with a three tailwind, I was. I'm not going to lie, my stomach kind of tightened up a little on that one. I mean, I, I don't want anything outside putt range, so that was that was an awful shot. Um, standard, hole five is pretty standard here. So now I'm a little worried about what's going to be coming up next because I need a 12 under. And I know Blueberry's not going to give me any good opportunities other than that one par four. So I decided to get a little aggressive on that one. I threw the recoil. Um, so I've got one eagle. I need two more eagles. And so at this point, I'm thinking, man, if it's sunshine ending so then hole six so it's another par three so i'm thinking to myself i'm like crap i am behind the ball here so i've got to do something because if sunshine comes up i'm gonna have to get an ace or two and an eagle so i'm really concerned at this point that i'm going to be able to hit that 12 under and so i'm nervous after this hole thinking i need two more eagles and then immediately when i see this hole i had a big freaking grin on my face i'm like yes albatross and so this right here will get me two of the, basically two of the eagles I need. So I throw my light glide and midair, I thought I swung it too far right. But luckily the wind was only one and I cleared it and I'm like, yes. And so now basically an albatross is two eagles. So now I know I've got my 12 under. And so now this is where I get a little greedy and I'm thinking to myself, I see Island Hopper and I'm like, oh man. So if I birdie and then most likely I'm going to get maybe a par three or something else. So if I go birdie, birdie, I tie, I get a 12 under, I tie for first. But if you guys know me at all, I'm really aggressive. So I'm absolutely going to go for this with a wind of three. And so I, I really thought about, I'm debating. And I said, no, go for the gusto. And so I go for it with my light glide ballista. And as soon as I let go right there, I'm like, yes, I got it. So all I'm hoping for right now is to stick, don't skip too far and nix the branches and hell yes. So I was thrilled with that one. And so now all I need to do is birdie. So I got the mando hole. I'm like, just don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. And so with the window one, I'm going to go ahead and throw my river and I can kind of ace run this and not worry about going too long. But all I know is if I birdie this one, I've got myself a one shot lead and most likely to win and I almost aced it and so uphill putt from 22 I got this and so now right now I was like yes I pulled down another pro tour win I got this and I go back and check the leaderboard and my name doesn't show up and I scroll and scroll and scroll and you'll see something at the bottom and when I saw that red dash, my heart sank. I'm like, God, this happened again. This is not, this has happened to me probably seven or eight times. It's always because of me recording rounds. Um, I've got an older phone. I've got memory issues where I'm not able to clear the memory out. And so when I record, it causes crashes, it causes issues. And this round, for whatever reason, didn't register. It showed up. You saw the scorecard at the end. It registered there. If you go into my rounds in my profile it showed up there everything works it for some reason it didn't register and i have no idea why i've like i said it's it's a recording issue so with that 13 under i should have had a minus 47 and a one shot victory instead i'm gonna get nothing so it sucks i mean i get mad i think i got mad the first couple times it happened 
And so it's one of those things where I could, I could avoid the issues by not recording, but I love doing these YouTube rounds where I post these rounds and I show people. So if I didn't want this to happen, I would just not record my rounds because it has never happened when I don't record. But I mean, it is what it is. It's the risk I run. I know this has happened. I've talked to Shane and David. We talk about these things and it's, I mean, I know, I know what to do to avoid it. It's don't record, but so it is what it is. So that was a minus 47, but I'll get nothing for that. So kudos to D Bargs. That is a great score on that one. And I'll just have to come back with a, hopefully a winning four rounds. And again, for me, this is, it's all about sharing the knowledge. So my frustration is hopefully your guys gain. So hopefully you enjoy the four rounds and kind of what I consider some boring layouts, but Again, hopefully you enjoy this, and I will be back hopefully with some Pro Tour rounds, ideally with none that crash like just happened during this. So have a good one, and I'll return sometime later.